The fourth generation Ford Focus Estate has been given a proper working over in this updated form, with greater practicality, sleeker looks, a much improved SYNC 4 infotainment system and extra technology. There's also impressive efficiency beneath the bonnet thanks to a high-tech range of petrol and diesel engines. It's not the biggest or the cheapest estate in its sector, but it might just now be the most appealing all-rounder. Such is the pull of small SUVs that the estate car seems to have had its last rights read time and again, yet still the station wagon genre struggles on. The reason why it refuses to die? Well, it's a good idea. What's more, if people were honest about why they really needed a vehicle, an estate car would make more practical sense. They carry just as much as many SUVs, yet they're better to drive, they're lighter, and they're more aerodynamic, which means better efficiency. And they're usually cheaper to buy, too. Ford's bought us some brilliant estates down the years, but as much as customers have warmed to the Focus hatch, the five-door estate has never occupied a huge slice of the overall Focus sales pie chart. Perhaps this improved version of the Mark IV design can formulate a more convincing argument. This fourth generation Focus Estate, like its predecessors, has a reputation as a family station wagon with the ability to entertain at the wheel. And if you enjoy your driving, that's something you'll appreciate pretty early on the first time you try one. Over 20 years ago, the original version of this model achieved much the same thing by standardizing advanced multi-link rear suspension across its model lineup. Today, you get that too, in contrast to the hatch body shape, which restricts this more advanced damping setup to its most powerful variants. The engine range was significantly updated as recently as 2020 with Ford's uh, latest MHEV mild hybrid technology. And of course, that's carried forward with electrified MHEV 125 and 155 PS versions of Ford's one litre three cylinder EcoBoost petrol unit. You can, though, now get this 48 volt power plant with a seven speed power shift auto gearbox. And that's what we're trying here. For entry-level customers not wanting to pay the premium required for the extra electrified tech, this three-cylinder EcoBoost engine also continues to be offered in non-electrified 125 PS form, uh, which is the model you have to have if you want your 1.0-litre 125 PS Focus Estate fitted with a manual gearbox. The MHEV mild hybrid version of the 125 PS 1.0-litre model only comes as an auto. Order this one litre engine in the uprated 155 PS4 we're trying for this test and the MHEV tech becomes mandatory and there's a choice of either manual or auto transmission. Got all that? Good. Higher mileage drivers who remain unconvinced by petrol power will be pleased to see that the 1.5 litre 120 PS EcoBlue diesel engine has been retained in the range, though only with 8 speed auto transmission. At the top of the lineup, the Uber Rapid ST Performance model continues on with a 280 PS 2.3 litre EcoBoost petrol unit. As before, across the range, the ride isn't overly firm, but body control through the bends is still exemplary, allowing you at the wheel to make the most of the stiff C2 platform, the feelsome power steering and the torque vectoring control system that helps you get the power down through the bends. It all combines to create a car that can still reward at the wheel, even in its most affordable forms. There's still nothing else in this segment that feels quite the same, yet it still does the sensible stuff well too, uh, being decently refined with confident braking and a lovely tactile manual gear shift if you go for the stick shift. The styling has usefully evolved, but still looks a touch conservative in this station wagon guise. Versions of this improved Focus are marked out by smarter LED headlamps with built-in fog lights, plus the brand badge has been moved from the bonnet to the front grille. 
and the darker rear tail lamps have a smarter loop light illuminating signature. Bigger changes are reserved for the cabin, which now features this larger 13.2 inch SYNC 4 central touchscreen. In a controversial move, Ford has decided that this monitor should now incorporate the ventilation controls, giving the dashboard a cleaner, less cluttered look. We're not sure that this is actually a step forward, but the infotainment system's ability to now accept over-the-air updates certainly is. As a result, you'll get into your focus estate one morning and find it able to do something that it couldn't do the day before, which is rather cool. Analog dials can be replaced by this smart digital instrument binnacle. As before, rear seat space isn't exemplary, but there's decent room for a couple of adults. Since this is an estate though, our emphasis needs to be on the luggage bay, which really is a lot bigger than it is in the hatch. Plus, you can have the gesture control powered tailgate that we have here, if you're prepared to pay extra for it. A typically specified estate model fitted with a mini spare, that's what we've got here, uh, offers up to 575 litres of capacity, or as much as 728 litres if you load to the roof. As part of the changes made to this revised version of the Mark IV model, Ford has enhanced this station wagon's cargo area for greater practicality, responding to customer feedback. The luggage space is now trimmed with a high quality cropped carpet, which uh, not only delivers a premium feel, but uses short fibers that make it easier to clean. An additional side load net is ideal for storing smaller items that could otherwise move freely around the load space while traveling. And twin LED lights provide clearer illumination in low light conditions. The adjustable load floor is now twin hinged, allowing it to be folded to create a vertical divider that locks into place at a 90 degree angle, creating two separate spaces to keep items more securely in place. The load area also now features a lower wet zone with a waterproof plastic load floor liner inserted into the space to provide water resistance against items such as wet suits and umbrellas. The water resistant liner can be removed from the space for easy draining or cleaning and the area can be enclosed from the rest of the boot with the floor folded down or separated with the vertical divider to create wet and dry zones. If you need more room or want to push forward the 60-40 split rear bench, then you'll be pleased to find that auto-folding, easy-fold rear seat backs come as standard, operable via these cargo sidewall mounted catches. Now, with everything flat, up to 1,653 litres of space is on offer, thanks to the 175 millimetres of extra loading length and extra 43 millimetres of roof height that was incorporated from the beginning into this fourth generation model. An increase apparently calculated so as to enable owners to comfortably accommodate a dog crate. Now, you'll want to know about pricing, which we'll quote as it was at the time of this test in early 2023. This estate body style attracts a premium of £1,160 over the equivalent hatch. There are uh, three main trim options, uh, value-orientated titanium being the most affordable, priced from just over £28,000. The other two main spec level options are crossover style active and, as in this case, sporty ST line. For around £2,200 more in all three cases, you can get plusher X versions of all three trim options. At the top of the range sits the high performance ST version, though for one of those you're looking at a starting price of, well, around £38,000. For sporty drivers, this ST line variant offers unique body styling, including special upper and lower grille designs, a rear spoiler, and polished twin tailpipes. Inside, there's a flat bottom steering wheel, a black headliner, an aluminium gear knob, alloy finished pedals, and red stitching. 
Equipment levels reflect the fact that most customers will be paying over £30,000 for this once very affordable compact family estate. Even the base focused titanium comes a standard with 16 inch alloy wheels, full LED headlamps, navigation, drive modes and air conditioning. Plus you get Ford's latest 13.2 inch SYNC 4 touchscreen incorporating navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto smartphone mirroring, a DAB digital radio with Bluetooth and emergency assist. Now, in addition, there's an electronic parking brake, autonomous emergency braking, uh, tire pressure monitoring, hill start assist, and a lane keeping aid. New safety systems added across the range include blind spot assist, intersection assist, and local hazard information, which can warn drivers of hazardous situations on the road ahead. Plus, there's adaptive cruise control with stop and go, uh, speed sign recognition and lane centering, which helps to ease the strain of driving in stop-start traffic. Uh, Pre-collision assist with active braking helps drivers avoid or mitigate the effects of collisions with vehicles, pedestrians and cyclists, while active park assist operates gear selection, acceleration and braking to enable fully automated parking manoeuvres simply by holding down a button. Let's get to the figures, which we'll quote using the usual WLTP measurement for fuel and CO2. Now bear in mind that with all the engines, if you choose a model with the 8-speed auto gearbox, you'll hit your efficiency readings by around 10%, which isn't the case if you go for a Volkswagen Group model with DSG auto transmission. The latest version of the 1 litre EcoBoost petrol unit that most Focus customers choose gets increased injection pressure to facilitate efficiency. In MHEV mild hybrid form, this unit gets a lower compression ratio and a large turbo. And the MHEV version has been embellished by a beefed up starter generator driven by a belt at the front of the engine that stores the energy harvested when you brake or decelerate in a tiny 48 volt lithium ion battery secreted at the back of the car. That 1 litre EcoBoost petrol unit comes in two forms with 125 PS in standard form with manual transmission or in MHEV mild hybrid guise with a power shift auto. Both variants returning up to 52.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle with a CO2 reading of 121 grams per kilometre for the standard version and 122 grams per kilometre for the MHEV. Move up to the 155 PS version of the 1 litre engine, that's what we're trying here, and the mild hybrid system is mandatory and you get the choice of manual or automatic transmission. With a manual 155 PS model, the combined fuel figure is up to 54.3 miles to the gallon and up to 116 grams per kilometre of CO2. It's 53.3 miles to the gallon and up to 119 grams per kilometre of CO2 for the auto version. What about the diesel? Well, for the 1.5 litre EcoBlue unit with 120 PS and auto transmission, that's the only spec on offer, you're looking at up to 57.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and up to 129 grams per kilometre of CO2. For completion, we'll also give you the figures for the ST 2.3 litre EcoBoost petrol performance variant, up to 35.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 183 grams per kilometre for the manual version and 35.8 uh, miles to the gallon and 182 grams per kilometre for the automatic variant. The Focus Estate has always seemed a bit of an afterthought from Ford. It was neither big enough or buoyed by serious promotion, and that hasn't and won't change for the short term at least. What does seem to be changing slowly but surely is customer perceptions of estate cars in general. Maybe it's a backlash against suburban SUVs that once smacked of active lifestyles, but now just scream shopping and school run. The estate car is quietly staging a revival.
If you're looking for a station wagon of this size, the fact is that in this improved form, the Focus is now one of the very best. It's not the biggest, and nor is it the cheapest contender in its segment, but as an all-rounder, it takes some beating. The smaller petrol engines are well worth a look, and in the shape of this sporty ST line variant, Ford offers a slightly more dynamic station wagon choice for family buyers. A focused estate, you might say.